If you're just starting out on your photo editing journey, you've probably asked the question, what is the best photo editing software for a beginning photographer? And it's a really valid question, and I hope by the end of this video, I'm gonna have given you a definitive answer for that. So I am a massive Adobe fan. I've been using Photoshop for about 25 years. I've been using Lightroom since it first came out, but they are not the software packages that I would recommend for somebody just starting out. One reason is they are subscription based, so you're continually paying for those. Um, I much prefer a model where uh, if it's a small enough investment up front, um, that's the option that you can go with and that's your software forever. But more importantly than that, is that the learning curve for both of those pieces of software, as good as they are, it is a really steep learning curve and you're gonna to have to invest a huge amount of time just to get good at it. So the solution I've got for you is a really simple to use editor, but it's still really, really powerful. You can basically start with just a couple of tools. Even one tool can make a massive improvement to your photos. So I'm really looking forward to showing you that. But as you want to evolve your photography and evolve your skill set as a photo editor, this software allows you to do that. Now, the other thing to bear in mind with this recommendation of this software is I have tried a lot of other software. A lot of people have come to me saying, hey, would you give our software a trial, see what you think of it, recommend it. Um, and so I have tried quite a lot of different packages and this is by far the easiest to learn and gives you the best results quickest. It's also one of the most affordable. So what is it? It's a program called Illuminar. It's currently on version 4.3 as of recording this video. So I'm really excited to show it to you. The photos that I'll be demonstrating on, they're nothing special. They're the kind of things that as a beginning photographer are well within your grasp. Things like family shots, a little landscape shot here and there. Um, and maybe I'll even show you how I'm using this photo editing tool at a professional level as well. Because as I said before, it can grow with you and it's got some really neat tools that have come to my rescue several times on high-end high-paying commercial jobs so let's take a look let's dive in so let's double click Luminar 4 and load it up as I mentioned before we're currently on version 4.3 and when Luminar opens for the first time, you won't see any photos here. So what you'll need to do is actually come to the folders section here within the library. Just click the plus icon and then you can navigate to your folder that contains all your photos on your computer. Luminar is then going to bring all of your photos in, uh, organize it as per your folder structure on your computer, which is really nice. And you're good to go, good to start editing. So I told you that there's a particular tool that is so, so easy to use and really improves your photos really simply. So let me show you that on, let's go with this photo here. So Luminar loads the photo in, and this is what it looks like straight out of camera. It's just a photograph of my daughter sat when we went for a walk one day. So if we come to the edit module, and that's where you wanna to go to do anything with uh, enhancing your photos, and the tool that we're going to look at is called AI Enhance. If we drop that down, we've got access to this AI accent. And this honestly blows my mind because, well, let me show you what it does. Let me grab this and push it to 100. So just with that one slider, if I turn that off and on, it's increased contrast, it's increased the color saturation, it's increased local contrast, it's brightened the photo, so it's actually corrected exposure as well. Uh, it's basically using AI to analyze our photo and say, okay, what do I want to improve from this? We'll take it to this. And that works with pretty much any photograph you throw at it. So let's come back to our library and choose a different photo. Okay, so there's a few shots here from while we've been in lockdown. Uh, let's do this one here of my daughter because it is underexposed. So traditionally you need to change your exposure, probably work with the contrast. But here in Luminar we can come to this AI accent. If I push that to the right, do you see that? Like, what a change! Ah, how cool is that? We've like... We've increased the exposure, so we've brightened her skin. The jacket has got more uh, color vibrance to it. Uh, just everything is improved in this photo just with that one slider. So let me turn that off and turn that on. So the really cool thing with this AI accent slider is 
yeah, you can go into every photo individually and play with that slider. Or what I'd recommend doing is actually just saving that one uh, change to a preset. And then when you bring your photos in, if, if you like, say, putting 50% of that effect onto your photos, you can just throw that in there as a starting point to all of your photos. And straight away, the AI accent is going to analyze every single one of your photos and make the changes that it feels are necessary to improve those photos. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> okay, so that's AI accent, and for the most part, it is really great at improving your photos. But what if you want to take things just a little bit further, if you feel they need a little bit more help? Well, there's another tool called AI Structure, and that's all about improving contrast. So you don't need to manually go in and know anything about curves and levels and things like that, like you do in Photoshop. All you need to do is get this slide up, move it up, put it to where you're happy with. So should we take a look at that? I think we should. <laughs> okay, let's work on this photograph here of my son on his bike. So that's loaded into Luminar. We can now click Edit. And if we come to the AI Enhance section again, let's grab the AI Accent and push that all the way up. See if I put it in, take it away, you can see that we're getting more blue in the sky, getting more detail on him. So if we do a before or after, or another thing that I really love is this slider here, so you can go before and after. But let's just say we want to have a little bit more interest and contrast on him and his bike, maybe even like the sand ripples. Uh, we can come to this AI structure tool, and I'm going to start applying that, and you'll see that it, it gets pretty heavy and pretty aggressive pretty quickly. But if I push that all the way to the right, that's probably too much. But I'm going to show you what we can do about that. If we like a little bit of that effect, let's say, I don't know, let's, let's push it all the way to the right hand side, just so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so this was our before, this was our after. As I say, it's just a little bit too much, but what you can do is use a mask. So if we just click our edit mask, and we use a brush just to paint in that effect where we want it. So basically we're gonna paint in over my son here, over his bike, maybe a little bit along the sand as well, maybe along the horizon line. And we're currently at 50%. If you see up here, the opacity of the brush is 50%. Let's say we want to have the effect a bit stronger. We can go to 100% and just make sure that over our sun, our son, my son, <laughs> be worried if he's your son as well, um, paint that a little bit stronger. So now if we turn AI structure off, and on, um, you can see that that's just affecting him and the sort of horizon. Um, and now we can just sort of taper that away just a little bit so it's, you know, less in your face. And if we look at our before and after, before, after, there we go. We've got a nice improvement on that photo. I'm really hoping that from me just showing you how with like one or two sliders you can really enhance your photos and so you can get just get a sense of how easy it is for you to actually become a little bit of a photo hero. You can do your editing on your work, put it on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, and all of a sudden people are like going, wow, that's a really cool photo, wow, you know, likey, 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 um, but it's really easy to do. But you can take it so much further. So let's keep going and I'll just show you some of the other tools that I think make this an absolute must for any photographer like I said I'm a professional photographer and I use this in my workflow so it's it's a really great piece of software and I believe it's available for around a hundred US dollars maybe a little less than that actually um, and I also have a promo code for you which is at sky 10 so if you do want to get yourself a copy of it and you use the link below with at sky 10 that'll also save you ten dollars as well so for not too much. I think this is a really good investment for a bit of software that you've got forever. So no recurring fees. So that's a good thing. So let me show you something else that we can do with Luminar. Let's have a look. So using the film strip down here on the left, I'm just going to choose another photograph. And this one is my daughter having a grand old time in a sprinkler in the summer. So let's do what we did before, which is grab AI accent and increase that and straight away before after. Very nice. And let's increase the structure. We'll probably be bringing out some detail on the water droplets. Nice. Yeah, I don't like to take that one quite as far as I do the AI enhance, but let's have a look at our before and after, before and after. But now let's say that this is a procedure that we're doing quite often. We're using AI accent and we're using AI structure. Well, what we can do is actually save that as a look. So if we come up to looks here and we go save new look, 
Let's call this basic enhance. Click save. And now we've saved that, we have access to that as a look. So if I were to select a completely different photograph, so let's change genre, let's come back to our library and we're gonna go into landscapes. So now we're in the landscapes folder, let's select this image here. And as you can see, it's pretty horrendously underexposed, my bad, but let's see if Luminar can save me. So as you see, I hover over this basic enhance, which is the, um, the look or the preset that we just created. I'll click that and that effect is now applied to that photo. So we've taken it from that to that, just like that, one click and we're done. So that's what I'm talking about, how easy it is to apply to other photos. You can actually batch process all your photos if you want to, select them all, right click and just apply that preset. So let's try another photo and see how well this approach works. So I've selected this photo here that was taken on a very misty day of these sheep and a farm in the background. And literally all I'm going to do is just click on our basic enhance and boom, just like that, from that to that. Thank you very much, doctor. I'm look, I mean, one click. <laughs> I mean, what more do you want from one click? Come on. Like, that's so cool. Love it. So using those two tools, you can see that you can really enhance your photos with the minimum of effort. But what if you want to take things just a little bit further or perhaps for whatever reason, the AI hasn't done exactly what you were hoping for. And that's quite possible because uh, photography and photo editing, it's a creative process and it's sometimes up to you to make those creative decisions. So let's look at an example where we can take things a little bit further and as your knowledge of photo editing evolves, uh, these are the kind of things that become available to you. You can take things just a little bit further. So let's have a look. Let's choose the photograph straight underneath. Now this shot of a beach here, I took this and it was just after sunrise and it was a beautiful warm morning. Um, and you can see on the horizon here, it's kind of bleached out to white, but in actual fact, it was a really nice warm orangey through here. And there was much more visible texture in the clouds. So. As a starting point, let's click our basic enhance and see what that gives us. Okay, that's quite nice, but I actually feel like that AI structure is giving it a bit too much of a kind of crunchy look. So let's come into our edit, come into the AI structure and just drop that down just a little bit. And what I want to do is actually bring out more detail with the orange through here. So we can come into our color tab and you've got the option to increase the vibrance of the colors. So we could, um, you know, from our before to our after, we've really increased the color vibrancy, but that's an overall adjustment. What if we want to talk straight into the oranges? Well, this is where you can get a little bit more advanced if you like, drop down the advanced settings and you can say, well, hey, these are gonna be in the oranges. I want to boost the saturation of my oranges and maybe not have them quite as bright. So if we look at our before and our after, we've just increased the orange through there. But that's that's probably not as much as I would actually like. So why don't we go back to Luminar's tools that are built into it and designed just to make life easy for us. So we've got a section here called Landscape Enhancer. And what we could do is try using the Dehaze tool just a little bit. And that always helps to just punch the colors up a bit. And just below that, we've got a filter called Golden Hour. Now, if I take that to the right, that is definitely gonna saturate those oranges. So you can see that that's really pushing through those oranges, particularly around the horizon line here. And if we feel like the changes it's making are not what we really want going on through the whole image, we can again use our mask, edit mask. Uh, we can use a brush and using the bracket keys, we can make it bigger or smaller and we can just paint it in just where we want it. Now this red is just indicating where the mask is, not the actual look that we're painting in. And so there you go. We've got our before and after, and we've increased the lovely orange glow. And if we look at our overall before and after, you can see that we've really helped this photo on its way. So I'm gonna do two more things in the video. One is I'm gonna show you more of a kind of workflow, how you can take things much, much further if you want to. Still really, really quick, all slider based. Um, and I'll show you how I might work on a photograph and show you some of my favorite filters. And I'm also gonna show you what is one of the coolest AI tools that I've seen built into any software, really powerful, and that's the AI Sky Replacement tool. And that's what I was alluding to when I said there's a tool in here that's helped me out on my commercial photography. 
Sometimes I've been on location photographing architecture and you can't necessarily plan your shoot for the most perfect sky, sunset, whatever. Um, and it's given me the ability to actually swap out skies quite seamlessly and without all the painstaking masking that you need to go through in Photoshop. Like I've honestly spent an hour more masking skies before in Photoshop. This does it all for me with a click of a button. So let me show you both of those things. Okay, so this is a photograph I took while my family and I were camping. You got the sun poking through here, but it's not really adding too much to the photo. And the colors look quite cold. It was actually a super warm, beautiful evening. So I want to actually imbue the photograph with a sense of warmth. Because sometimes with photography, when you're doing your edits, it's not necessarily about about making your image look believable and exactly as it was right there and then, but it's about sometimes uh, putting a feeling and an emotion into the photograph. How did it make you feel? How were you feeling at that moment when you took the photo? So let's see if we can do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up this light panel and this shows you much more of a kind of traditional photo editing view where you can control the exposure, brighten things up. Uh, there's a smart contrast filter here where you can actually um, play around with that. You can bring the highlights and the shadows around if you want to, all of that sort of stuff. So I encourage you as you dive deeper into Luminar to play around with that. So if I turn that off and on, we've made a little bit of a change there. We can warm the photograph up slightly with the temperature and I certainly think that will help. Um, perhaps we need to bring a little bit more of this magenta rather than the green. As you can see, if I take this left and right, you can see what these sliders are doing. And that's another thing I encourage you to do with the sliders, just slam them left, slam them right, and just see what effect they're having. And then you can be more finessed with how much of it you want to put in. So AI accent, I push it all the way to the right and I think, yeah, that's too much. So I can just sort of dial that back to where I feel it's appropriate. Uh, we can do the same with AI structure. Bam, it's really crunchy and for what I'm after in this particular photo, far too much. Um, but we might just leave six in, let's say. Now this is where things, uh, we can take a little bit more control. We can come into our color section, grab the greens, and I actually want to pull some of these greens out. I'm just finding them a little bit too saturated. Um, I want to make this more about warm tones, warm oranges. So I'm gonna take some of those greens out and maybe the yellows, I may actually just brighten those slightly, increase the saturation and take the hue from the greeny tones. Uh, you can see if I push that to the left, takes it orange, to the right makes it more green. So let's just push those a little bit more orange. And for, with any of these palettes that you work on, it's really nice. What you can do is just toggle it off and on just to see that the change that you've made. So now I'm gonna to start to show you some of my favorite tools. So I love the vignette. Uh, this is quite a common tool in most photo editors, having a vignetting tool. So what you do is as you take the amount one way or the other, you're either brightening or darkening the edges and that just helps to focus your viewer's attention on the area they want, uh, that you want as the photographer. But the best thing about this tool is unlike most where it's all based around the center of the frame and fading off to the edges, you can actually choose the subject. So if your subject's down here, you can make them the highlight, or if you want to have the sun as the highlight, you can click up there. Um, so it's, it's a really nice way to actually control where that vignette is and where it falls off. The next thing I want to show you is, uh, let's have a look at Mystical, I love this filter. I'm gonna put all of this on so you can see exactly what it's doing. And it creates a very dreamlike quality to your photos. As with so many of these, they're very powerful tools. 100 is far too much. So I like to just, just kind of ease this in around that 25 mark, um, but that looks quite nice. Another tool that just blew me away the first time I used it. You need to get ready for this because it is like, was so cool, so cool, so cool. It's a sun rays filter, and I've actually created videos on how to create sun rays in Photoshop, and the video itself just showing all the steps involved. I think it was about a 20 minute video. So let me show you how easy it is uh, in this software. So if I turn this on, you can see these sun rays. Oh, beautiful. So if we click place sun center, we can actually move this around, and as you move it around, look at that. Look at that. The artificial intelligence is smart enough to see where the holes in the trees are so the light can come through. 
Like, that's just insane. So to get a sense of believability, you want to try and match up with where your sun actually is. Uh, so let's do that. And then by playing around with these settings here, you can create a really believable sun ray effect. I like to actually reduce the number of sun rays all the way down to zero, and then I'll play around with this randomize effect until I get the sun rays kind of in the main area I want them to be. So with that there, I quite like this beam kind of coming down to the people in the tent here. And if you feel like it's too much, what you can do is actually just use your mask again. So we can brush this effect back in where we want it. So I want the ray to come down here. Definitely want that. And if we want a little bit coming through the trees as well, but not too much, let's say. So let's turn that off and on. Now we have sun rays. If the playing around with the colors was something that you were like, oh, I'm not quite ready for, for that yet, there's a really neat tool called Lookup Tables, and these have come straight from the movie industry. It's how they give uh, movies a nice color grade, you know, warm feel, a cool feel, and that's come straight into this piece of software, and it's a really quick, intuitive way to actually uh, change the look of your photo. Come to Color Styles Lookup Table, and now as I come down through these different options you can see that they completely change the look of the photo the look and the feel so if we find one we like let's say Long Beach for example we quite like that but we don't want it at 85% we can just fade it into a point where we feel happy with that so maybe somewhere around 44 we can then desaturate it slightly if we want and play with the contrast as well so uh, there's heaps of options with this, so if we turn it off and on, you can really finesse the look of your photo. If you are familiar with Photoshop and the more complicated tools in that, for example, they are still accessible here. So for example, let's go to Light Advanced Settings. You can jump into your curves here, which for a new photographer, it's going to seem a little daunting, but if you understand curves and you want to have a play around with this, you can actually come straight into curves and tweak the look of your photo through that. And then if you're happy with the look of the color, what you can do, um, if you find like the whole thing, it's just a little bit too strong, we can come into our color settings here and just reduce the saturation a little bit. And now if we turn this off and on, you can see that we have completely transformed the look and feel of this photo. So we had something that was shot in a really nice warm evening light, but it looks cool. It doesn't give you that sense of warmth of what it's like to be on a nice camping holiday in the sun. So we create this look and all of a sudden we have got a, just a feeling behind this photo. And I really love that. So hopefully you can see from this example that I've just shown you here, as I took you through those steps with, I think maybe five or so different tools that I used in combination to create myself a look, um, which incidentally I can save that now as a preset and put that on any photo, which is really cool. Um, but basically we've got the scope to for this software to go from just being something that you use that Accent AI, simple slider, simple improvements, to really much more high-end editing. So as I said right at the beginning, I do use this for my professional work as well. Um, you can actually use it as a plugin for, uh, for Lightroom and Photoshop, so that if there are tools within either of those pieces of software and you also want to um, piggyback off the power of Luminar's AI and some of these tools, you can use them in conjunction. So that's really cool. I do that a fair bit, uh, but you don't need Lightroom or Photoshop to do, be doing any of this, which is brilliant. Um, but let me show you this last thing. This is so cool. This is this is what I was like a game changer for me. I went and shot uh, quite a few architectural projects um, on days where it wasn't great, overcast potentially, or the sky wasn't quite right and I did a sky swap. So let me just uh, show you this sky swap and we'll leave it there even though there's so much more to this program, but hopefully you guys have got a sense of just how 
useful this piece of software is, uh, particularly for beginner photo editors. Let's come back to the library and let's jump into our architecture section. Uh, you can see all these shots here. So we've got a few with sky in. So let's just choose this shot here because the sky is pretty plain and blue. It was the evening just after the sun had set and the clear blue sky was just going very, very blue, uh, which is lovely. I, I actually really like this shot as it is, but let's just say that our client wants a different look or you've shot a landscape and you want to change the sky in your landscape. It's so easy. Come to AI sky replacement turn it on and boom just like that just like that you've gone from a deep blue sky uh, to one with uh, evening sunset clouds but you can choose any sky look you want we could go for a dramatic sunset if we wanted um, something like this and you've got tools to uh, blend this in more. You can relight the scene to change the look of the actual coloring uh, to match the sky. So the foreground matches the sky. Uh, the scope of this tool is insane. Uh, just the fact that it can mask all these trees instantaneously blows my mind and I'm so grateful to have this tool at my disposal. So as a beginning photographer looking for a piece of software to get started with and something that will grow with you, I think you cannot go wrong with investing in Luminar. To be honest, it's like 90 something dollars, maybe $100, I'm not entirely sure, um, but there's a link below that you can go to and you can use that code at Sky10 um, that I got hold of through uh, Skylum who create Luminar and you are more than welcome to use that to get yourself a discount. I've also got put together a free series of uh, training videos on how to use this as well. So I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. So when you get yourself a copy, you can just go and watch those. They're like five, six, seven minutes each. Um, and it will show you all the key aspects uh, that you need to get up and running with this. But if that's too much for you, like I say, just stick with that AI accent slider. Bam, done, bam, done, bam done. <laughs> I'm out of here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another video. Cheers guys.